Hello everybody, I finally joined an era of... Whoops, <laughs> no wire on my headphones. I got an audio right here, so you're gonna hear it go up and down. I'm still not used to that. I really like to touch my last headset, so I've been finding myself just moving that back and forth. Doggies, please don't. Um, so, if you hear the volume in the game for about maybe the first month here, go up and down at random spots, it's because I accidentally touched my headset. This video is going to talk about just the general builds of these five heroes. We're going to do the unlockable ones because obviously these are the starting four. I will do a part two with the starting four, but for the most part, you're probably going to have most of these skills and have used them way more frequently than these other five. That's why we're kind of go from last unlocked to the first person, well, to the first four you get. And we'll talk about good party combinations you can do with the first four. But as of right now, let's talk about these five people. Hellion, people really like the Hellion. I find her, she's decent. Um, she's definitely durable. She can have some pretty good damage as well. I haven't used her a whole ton, so there's probably some pretty good damage comp strats out there. I'm just not quite used to yet. But I have completed it multiple times with her, and I'm going to kind of go over my generic setup. I'm not a huge fan of toe-to-toe, -to -toe, um, though you could argue the immobilization of yourself would obviously be good for the Harvest Child, so that might be that, and also allows you to obviously become a tank with people focusing you. I'm not going to check out the upgraded skills yet, because it's not that easy to do that, sadly. I wish um, that is something I should put in. They should have a uh, they should have a thing where you can see when it gets upgraded, but I don't currently. They currently don't have that, but maybe that's something they'll add. Wicked Hacks, just a basic ability, pretty good. It's like Wicked Slice. Um, probably one of her weaker abilities, to be honest. Only upgrade 6 to 8. I'm not going to harp on that too much. Iron Swan, it's what it is in the first game, though a little weak in my honest opinion. We get the Barbaric Yawp. I can't remember what it upgrades to, but I usually take off Barbaric Yawp. If it bleeds, I keep it on. And toe to toe, I take off, unless you maybe you're situationally in a boss. So that leaves these three skills. I think they're pretty good in your row diversity, as she was in the first game as well. I'm a real big fan of Adrenaline Rush, it removes bleed, it removes that, it heals yourself when you're below a certain amount of HP. So, you don't have to have on the Revelry, oh no, it comes back to haunt me, Revelry, there we go. So you don't have to have that on, but granted this obviously stress heals your party and stress heals, but this removes it and this adds it, so maybe together they actually wouldn't be terrible, but I wouldn't recommend that too, too much. Bleed Out, I don't think the damage is there in this, um... And its current iteration, at least at the first level. It's 4 to 8, which means it's one more point on the max, and it does 4 bleed, which... Yeah, 4 bleed's nice, but not when you wind yourself, because when you wind yourself, you lose a certain amount of damage and stuff. It's just not quite worth it, so I don't often find myself p p uh, taking bleed out, especially since uh, enemies will have protection tokens as well. I just don't find it useful in Darkest Dungeon 2 at its current iteration. Bloodlust. It's not bad, it's obviously another way to get rid of it if you don't have Adrenaline Rush, and also 20% more damage when, ble when targets bleeding, that obviously upgrades when you increase it. It's honestly not that bad, it can be used on the final boss, because obviously you get some bleeds going, you use this maybe once or twice to get rid of some of the other stuff, so maybe you use something like Howling End, which we'll talk about. Uh, then you can Bloodlust next turn, and then you can do some serious damage, so Bloodlust isn't bad. Breakthrough. I don't know what it upgrades to, but this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is horde garbage. I mean, I might be missing something on the upgrade skill, but it moves you forward one to do one to two damage across three people. This is literally just to hit people on death's door ability, or maybe to get them from the fourth position. I don't know why you would ever put breakthrough on. I mean, that is a 75% damage reduction from like pretty much anything else. I mean, that is horrid, and it wins yourself. Like, just horrid, horrible. We talked about revel revelry right here. Um, it does obviously wind yourself, but that's some pretty good stuff. 20% HP minus that removes the uh, har and does your allies as well. Any positions, very good skill. And then there's howling wind, and that's actually what I usually put on now with adrenaline rush, all that. So I actually howling end. That's a one turn cooldown. I'll often then adrenaline rush because I might be bleeding or if I need HP. Kind of removes all that stuff. And then you know what? You could do it next turn if you want again, or you could obviously wicked. I mean, so Halion's really good. 8 to 14 for the base damage is amazing. And if you get like a vulnerability token or going or something, you can do some serious damage with Howling End. I like to use that when enemies are kind of tiltering near their last third of their HP bar because you can just annihilate them right at the end of the fight. 
So that's how I set up my Hellion. Once again, there's probably some other good combinations out there. I have used Bloodlust before to decent effect. Obviously, uh, Revelry, there we go. I like that one as well, but Barbaric Yawp, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Bleed Out. Oh god, Breakthrough. Those skills I kind of avoid. Runaway. We did a whole video on the Runaway, so I'm not really going to do too terribly much time on this. I know if you obviously haven't seen that video, we'll talk about all of her skills. Searing Strike, I think it's really good. Some people say it's a little weak, but 3 to 6 not that bad, especially with the burn damage. It almost becomes average like everyone else's. Firefly, kind of like the Plague Doctor's uh, Plague Grenades. Both of these upgrade really well, by the way, with their Mastery Token, in my opinion. Smoke Screen, it's a safe or suck ability, so if you don't like the fact that if you throw it and it doesn't activate, you did nothing. That's a personal opinion. Run and Hide, this eventually heals yourself and stealth. I think it's kind of useless. I almost always take it off. Hearth Light's not bad um, once it's upgraded, but I'm not going to talk about it too much. It removes enemy stealth, which is great in the sluice, but it can also remove blind on an ally, I believe, which is obviously good for your leper. You have Ransack, which I like to pull on. It pulls you forward one, pulls an enemy forward one. Three to six damage is actually rather respectable. So you can pull stress damage dealers in front of you. Well, towards you. You can also obviously de-shuffle, which is really nice as well. Cauterize is one of the few abilities in the game. It actually lets you heal yourself when you're not at a certain HP. And it's on bleed, which I feel is like probably the most common DOT in the game. Where at least the areas I go to, it's most common, so it's really good. Controlled Burn. I think it's just too slow, in my honest opinion. It's, uh, I think, three damage upgraded. It might be good in the final boss fight, but other than that, only three damage per turn, just not quite worth it. Dragonfly. Some people have said they use that with Fire Starty, Fire Starter upgraded. You can actually do six DOT, so if you get someone like a Jester, we'll talk about Encore, you could actually do a considerable amount of DOT. It does a two use. Apply. I, I can't remember the exact effects of Fire Starter. It's, it's not bad, though. Dragonfly. I think there's probably a time and place for it. I often don't find myself putting them on, though, because I have a very specific combination with the Runaway, but it doesn't mean these two skills are not useful. Now, Fire Starter is actually able to be used with items as well. So you can use Fire Starter, and then I believe do, like, Caltrops or some of the other medium and large DOT bombs and add that as well. So they actually become a pretty gross AoE-based uh, ability and can also be paired with Magnesium Rain on the Plague Doctor. Which can allow the Plague Doctor to do about 6 uh, DOT to everyone of fire, which is just ridiculous. Backdraft. This one... Honestly, I, I won't lie. I'm not entirely sure about this one, so I'm assuming the front monster house has all the damage. Use Backdraft, you have to choose which monster behind them takes that damage. It could maybe be useful if you just want to kill off the back row, like if you get like 10 or 11 damage. I think the upgraded goes to 75% or something. So you could do like 9 damage to the back row with your backdraft, but I don't know. I think she has so many other better skills I don't particularly probably want backdraft on. Jester, here we go. Razor Wit's really good. I like that. Shuffles you between 2nd to 4, obviously. Fade to Black is one of his better abilities, in my opinion. It blinds. It's decent damage. 3 to 6. Crit chance of 10%. It's actually pretty good. Once again, it can move you back. Slice off. I actually take that off, put on Harvest. It's not bad though. The upgraded version, I believe, is still only 3 DOT, but adds a vulnerability token, which is something you do have to consider. It does hit positions 2 and 3, like it did in the first game. Battle Ballad's not bad either. You can Battle Ballad a Leper forward, you can Battle Ballad a Highwayman forward for a point blank or something, and they obviously get the uh, damage tokens, so you could get some pretty gnarly damage going with a, uh, a, battle, a battle Ballad point blank. At the first level here, it'd be 9 to 18, which is phenomenal for level 1, so that's definitely something to consider. Spiring Tune, probably, you know, once again, the best stress heal in the game again. Upgraded goes to 3 and takes care of Har. Very good. Harvest is what I usually put on now instead of Slice Off, just because it hits both targets. About the same amount of damage, and if not more, actually, because you're applying 2 DOT to targets, and Upgraded does 3. This Upgraded does 3. So you figure you get 6 to that, and then you can go 3 to 5 or something like that. So eventually Harvest does technically out DPS Slice Off. But obviously Slice Off can be a little better for your target fire with the vulnerability. Finale, I haven't quite done this yet. Um, it's not terrible, actually. Uh, but it's one of those things where, you know, you could combo token with maybe a point blank. You could, you could do like a weird... I'm, 
I'm not going to do this too often, but you could like try a weird point blank combination where you point blank and then you allow like a finale. I mean, that should be a almost guaranteed kill shot every time on that target. So who knows? Maybe that's a weird strategy you could use. It's not something I've tried, but it would definitely kill the first position. We're going to move on to solo. So you could obviously solo gives you the speed, gives you the evasion, and then obviously the speed invasion would give you the chance to finale. I just don't know which two skills I would personally take off to do that combination. Um, maybe something like that, more of a battle jester. Now we'll look at his three other skills I like a little more. Play out, okay, I kind of lied there. I'm not a huge fan of play out. I don't know what it upgrades to exactly, but the initial skill itself. I mean, he has other skills that back and blind, but I mean, I guess if you really want to reduce some damage, but I'd always rather blind than reduce damage, just because Fade to black will obviously allow a percent chance to miss rather than hitting. Because if you still get hit with the DOT, if you're still on death's door, it's not going to matter. At least this allows a chance to miss. Encore. Encore is actually one of my more favorite ones. It's a free freaking action uh, on uh, another hero, not not himself. So I've used this a couple of times on the uh, like the Plague Doctor. You just double down on Plague Grenades where you can do like Blinding Gas and then something useful. Where I've done the Leper, where I've done Reflection. Um, where is it? I've done reflection into an immediate chop, or you could do revenge, get the token. Oh, well, it's on start, but that's what I'm saying. If a hero would like has a little bit of a startup, Encore can obviously remove that startup, or sometimes you just want maybe like a double, double death blow with Wicked Slice, so who knows? Or you could point blank. There's so many things you do on Encore. You can point blank and then you can repose, do a bunch of damage, and then get reposed up immediately. It does daze them, but that doesn't, eh, it's not that bad to be honest. And since he does receive lower weapon damage, you could easily do Inspiring Tunes or Battle Ballads. You don't have to do damage based abilities after Encore. Now, it does have cooldown on three turns, which is long, but you might be able to use it twice twice in one fight. And then we get to Echoing March. This is an odd one. I don't know what it upgrades to, but I'd probably stay away from it. It's a really weak pool because it doesn't do damage. Yeah, I don't know. It's just not fitting the bill for me. Leper. Leper's Chop, Chop is Chop, you put on Chop because that's his main damage. Purge, I recommend keeping Purge on as a body cleared. You could get rid of Purge if you want to do Plague Doctor Magnesium Rain. It does clear corpses, as you can see. However, my only warning about that is I actually really like Purge on because it uses your blind tokens. You can hit people, and even if you miss, it's still body clear. So it's a great way to get rid of blind tokens. If you get lucky, you can still do some damage, and you still body clear. Also, there's Trinkets in the game where if you miss, you can gain critical chance tokens and also just like um, strength tokens. So if you miss with Purge, you clear the bodies and you get the token. The next turn, you just blam. You got no blind token, you just chop them to death. Really good. Withstand's really baller. I like it in this game. When you upgrade it, I especially love it. So I'd highly recommend keeping Withstand on. Allows him to be a tank, take the damage, and as we'll see, he can heal his HP and stress damage like no other. Because he doesn't have limits yet, and please, Red Hook, do not fix that. Solemnity. Two uses, but heals two stress, upgraded 50% HP, minus three stress, and you can use this to just minus stress even when you don't get the HP bonus, which is really amazing, which is why I always keep it on. And I almost always keep on Reflection as well, because Reflection is really good, removes your blinds, removes your combo tokens, and takes care of one stress as well. Now you're wondering, wow, you just kept on all five of these other ones. Yeah, I did. So let's talk about Hugh. Hugh, three to seven is just not doing it for me, especially because it still applies that blind token. Goes up a little more, but without like really strong ways of reliably increasing damage in this game, I just found Hugh to be a little lackluster right now. Not something I do. I do like Revenge. When it's upgraded, it's pretty good. And like I said, you can actually encore that with a Jester if you want. Well... You could like encore and then do like withstand, where you could encore and then do reflection. So you could ref you could revenge and reflection, which would then get rid of your blind tokens, and that would completely set you up to do a lot of revenges, which would be really nice. Intimidate. The only reason why I have a slight issue with this is sure it can hit everywhere, it can decrease the enemy's damage. I'd rather just withstand. It gives me um upgrade, it gives you 75% protection tokens, it makes people attack you anyways, and you get all those sweet resistances. So Intimidate, I'm not feeling it. I'd rather just withstand. Ruin, so the way I'm now reading this ability, when you are damaged, I take it, you get more damage increase. Final boss would maybe be really good for this. Maybe enemy, maybe like layer boss fights would also be pretty good with it. 
If you were to do that, I'd probably like, take off Purge, because you won't need Purge for those situations, so you could easily take Purge off, put it on Ruin. That's pretty good. Break is an interesting one, so it's 4 to 7 damage, which is about half your damage. It removes the enemy's protection tokens, which... I'm not sure how I feel about that, because it self-blinds you still, it ignores, so it's like, at the end of the day, it's almost like a basic chop, unless they got like, 2 to 3 protection tokens stacked on them. But I don't think it breaks very good at its base level. And then we have Bash, and the Bash would only really ever be truly good, probably on the Harvest Child, as you'll immobilize yourself, and you won't let people move in front of you, or all that stuff, so the Harvest Child will obviously won't make you eat the meat. But overall, I think his starting skills are so good that you don't really actually need to venture too far into his unlocked ones, though they do have some uses. Finally, the Occultist. I won't lie, the Occultist is probably one of my least favorite characters, and only because he feels a little lackluster in certain areas of damage, except for Burning Star, we'll talk about that. And he's also the one with the biggest side gimmick in the game, so I don't really like the fact to have to set up a side gimmick to also, like, slightly burn- it's weird, I'm just- uh. I'm just not a big fan of what they did with the Occultist, that's all I'm trying to say. Sacrificial Stab. Uh, it's not terrible, but at the same time, it's like I really have an issue keeping both uh, Sacrificial Stab and Abyssal Artillery on. I do like Abyssal Artillery though, because it does hit the back positions, which is pretty hard to do in this game, because usually your frontliners deal with the front, and then the backliners have to deal with the back. Weakening Curse I typically take off. Um, it might upgrade well, but the initial I'm not feeling it. Weird Reconstruction's kind of a necessary evil if he's the only he healer. He does pair well with the Runaway though, because you can obviously cauterize bleed at any HP. So if you do bleed, you don't have to worry about taking that 3 bleed damage. He can at least cauter she can at least cauterize it. Demon Pool's still really good. I'm, I'm kind of sad it only pulls 2 initially, but it does give immediate combo token and does upgrade to pool of 3. Which is really good, so that can be useful for cultist fights, where obviously just pulling archers to the front row. Having that combo token for someone like a runaway to uh, spread her fire, or anyone else who can benefit from that. So I do enjoy Demon's Pool. Alright, I'm gonna repeat two skills here, guys, because I have no idea how long my dog was barking in the background, and I promise I will try to edit that out, but it's not always possible. Vulnerability Hex, I was saying, is really good against cultist fights because they're always adding evasion. It obviously gives vulnerability. You can blow up those little squishy guys right in the back easier, which is very good. Any position anywhere on their team, good stuff. Binding Shadows obviously works towards his gimmick, so if you like his gimmick, you know, like, why do Sacrificial Stab when you do Binding Shadows unless you want to set it up with, like, a point-blank Sacrificial Stab for an immediate one? That's up to you. I don't really usually build towards his gimmick, which is maybe why I don't enjoy him as much. It's just one of those things, like, I don't want to worry about, in four or five rounds, getting this guy to two points so I can use Burning Stars. That's my honest opinion as of right now. It could change with more gameplay. Malediction. The way I read this is you obviously need Greater or Two to use this, and anytime you hit an enemy, they have a chance of gaining one of any of those. Now, what I want to say is, is it like one bleed? Or is it like one bleed, one blight, one burning every turn? Because I should actually you know, pretty boss, and if this upgraded does two, you could potentially get four to six DOT every time you smack somebody, and if you smack someone two to three times in one turn, you could be popping 12 to 18 DOT off on that person, and that is quite frankly ridiculous. So I'm not exactly sure how that works yet. If that's how it works, I could see why you'd want to work towards that for much, much larger HP enemies. Animesis, so once again, this is kind of, um, this would be paired very well with what we just talked about with the Runaway and Firestarter. You could easily pop across 6 or 7. Now, the only reason why I would say maybe... Now, obviously, if you don't want to drag the Plague Doctor anywhere. This requires two of those gimmick tokens. This can obviously be used first round. This could be used first round. This would take a couple of rounds. However, once you get there, it'd be pretty dank. So, take it as you will. It definitely would have its abilities. 3 bleed, if upgraded, even goes to 4. I mean, that could be 7. So, that's pretty ridiculous with Firestarter. But other than that... I feel like by the time you get to plus two of these, there's probably one or two enemies dead already, and do you really want to add just three bleed to two remaining enemies? One, well, you get the Burning Stars. So the Burning Stars ignores protection. It makes the target have a combo token as well by the end of it. This is what I use my gimmick tokens for, because like I said, by the time I usually get to two or three rounds, that's when I have the potential to use stuff like this. 
At that point, I'm usually working on the last two. Maybe there's someone like one HP left for Dust Door on the other one. So Burning Stars is really just made to nuke down another person, kill that off, really finish the round off, and probably the next round after that. So I will keep on Burning Stars if I don't want to do something like a, uh, that's just a sac well, you need Sacrificial Stab to build them up. So if I don't like Abyssal Artillery, there you go. So you can do the Burning Stars. Then we get Chaotic Offering. This is obviously where you could really just generate these quickly, right? So 15% 15 damage, you immediately get one. Random side effect, turn start, you get another, right? So this is a cheap way to like quickly build up. Obviously you have to hurt yourself a little bit. It's not bad if you want to play an aggressive one. So if you want to play more aggressive, you could probably get rid of that and just maybe put on like, um, whoops. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, maybe something like that. I'd have to play around with it, but obviously, like I said, chaotic offerings, the surefire way to do it. You just have to lose some HP. And then, um, I don't know what the random side effect would be as well, but it might be okay. It might be bad. Honestly, I haven't used it too terribly much because as I said, I'm not a huge fan of the occultist. I think he's a little weak in some of his areas, but he definitely has his uses. All right. Thanks for watching so much. We'll talk about the other four in another video.